Hey guys, in this video, we're building a full text search engine in Golang. The reason we're doing this is because many of you have completed most of the Golang projects on my channel. And a few of you reach out to me saying that, hey, we've built these projects. Now, how do we implement search? And in production or in a, in a big scale application, you have multiple options. So you have Elasticsearch, you have Algolia, multiple different ways to search and or implement search in your system. And today I'm going to show you an approach where even if you don't use Elasticsearch or Algolia and you have not a very large scale application, but something from a small to a mid scale application, you'll still be pretty good. So in the example that we'll take today, I'll take an example which uh, or, or data set which has 600,000 documents and we'll be, able to, we'll be able to search through this uh, humongous data set in less than a second. And this approach that I'll show you today is very scalable up to 10 million rec uh, documents very easily you can scale. So that means 10 million different blog posts you can easily search through them within, a, within one to two seconds. So it's a highly scalable approach and if you don't have more than 10 million blog posts or 10 million products on e-commerce something like that you don't need Elasticsearch and Algolia because those approaches can be difficult to uh, implement and also difficult to maintain by maintain I mean to ensure that it's working perfectly fine and also it can be expensive to run on your server uh, because Algolia search is very expensive it's a fully managed service and Elasticsearch if you even if you host it on your own it's expensive and if you buy the managed service it's very expensive as well so if, you, if you're not building something really huge this approach is going to be really really good for you okay uh, now the way we'll build this project will be in a very modular way so that let's say if you've built an e-commerce platform or in Golang a blogging platform or a restaurant management application right now you'll be able to easily pick up this functionality that we'll build today and plug it into your application very simply the, with, without, without a lot of changes so that's the plan today to save you a lot of time and to help you expand the scope of your project okay before we get started just want to tell you that this particular project is going to be part of the 51 killer golang projects now when i add this project to this series it's going to be 52 killer golang projects make sure you've done many of the projects in the series because today's video is not a basic video right i'm not going to be covering very basic golang concepts i'll i'm um, assuming that you know the basics and it's mid to advanced level uh, difficulty level of today's video now what I receive on the comments that I receive on most of my videos the, the later videos like for example the blockchain video or the CSRF video uh, are that hey we're not understanding much you're not explaining uh, you know just coding and not explaining much and the reason for that is that because the way I've arranged these videos are is in a, in a particular order and this increases with difficulty so if you haven't done the earlier videos it's going to be very difficult for you to understand the later videos because they all build upon each other <coughs> sorry so make sure you know golang uh, well and that's when you're doing this particular video at least and also the later videos in this series now the data set that we'll be using i have put it in my github i'll be putting it in the description of this video but if i forget to do that make sure you know that I'm Akhil Sharma 90 on GitHub and the go full text search uh, is the name of the project and you'll find the data dump here. So we're using the official Wikimedia uh, data dump. And um, if you're looking for a job in 2024 and you're a Golang developer and if you're looking to switch, looking to get promoted, looking to climb up the ladder, this particular course that I've just released a few days back uh, is going to be very helpful to you. This is a six AI plus Golang projects. They're all advanced projects and um, we're building six really awesome projects. So like the Discord bot, which brings in ChatGPT and DALI both to Discord. You have the speech to text conversion. You have Telegram AI bot. You have the Kubernetes AI assistant, the Terraform AI co-pilot, the Terraform AI assistant, uh, the terminal AI assistant. Uh, so this project alone is 10 hours. Uh, this one is five hours. All the others are about approximately three to four hours each. So we have about 26 hours of content. Extremely detailed planning exercise for each project. The code is extremely well documented as well. And I've explained every single line of code in the, the project. So these are great projects to add to your portfolio. Uh, and even if you don't add them to your portfolio, if you know how to work with AI projects, with, with AI at the center of the software, 
uh, you're very well, you'll be positioning yourself very well to get uh, promoted or, or get a new job in 2024, okay? Because as you know, uh, the because of AI, now people only want to build AI projects and all the um, other type of jobs are not in that much demand anymore. All right, with that, that out of the way, let's get back to our project. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly remove my background because then you'll be able to see everything very well. So I hope this, this helps now when we go through the board. Uh, make this full screen as well. <clears throat> the data dump that I've given you the link for is gonna be 110 MB of compressed data. So you'll get like a xml.gz file uh, or it's 913 MB of decompress. So if you decompress it, it's 913 MB. It's the Wikimedia dump of various topics. It'll have approximately 600,000 documents. And this is what every single document looks like. So this is a sample talk in the dump. You get a title tag and you get the URL and you get the abstract. And the reason we want this is because we want to be, uh, we want to be mindful when we actually search through the text because we'll be searching through the, the abstract. So now a very common question would be, so in, in Golang, we already have the strings.contains, right? When we have small strings, we can check if the string contains a particular word and then search for it that way. And this is the approach that we have followed in many of the projects that we have done on, on this channel as well. And that works for like a very small scale, like we have a couple of strings and it works really well to check what the string contains of. And then you can also use regular expression and use match string to, to match for those words in that string. Um, and your question could be, why don't we just use that? Why do we need a to, to create a full-blown, full-text search engine? The problem with this is that this approach doesn't scale. So it clo takes close to two seconds for 600,000 docs, like this, th these two approaches. But what happens when we have more than 10 million or, or approximately 10 million uh, docs, right? This won't scale at all. It'll, it'll, uh, it'll just keep, the time will keep increasing to, you know, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. We don't have that kind of time when we when the user is searching. So this is why the scalable approach that we have today is called the inverted index. This means that we'll take the text, text basically meaning the complete data, data set that we have, and we'll pre-process it, and we'll create something called as the inverted index from that text. <clears throat> to show you an example of what this looks like, imagine that we've taken now just three documents from the entire data set. So this is what the three documents look like. Now this is like a very shrunken version of, or, or like a very basic example of what the, the data set could look like and the documents inside could look like, but you know the documents would be like very detailed. Every one single page is, is on Wikipedia is that, that's the one document. But let's say this is all that there's on, a, on one page. This is one document, this is another document, this is the third document, and each document has an ID, and this is the text in the document. So these are the documents, this is like the set of all our documents. <clears throat> the way you create this inverted index is you determine which, the, the word, where does it exist in, in which document. So the word A, which is a, exists only in the first document. Donut exists in the first and the second document, and the exists in second and third document, listen only in the third document, and so on, right? So we've created an index now. And using this index is how we'll search for our text, right? So we pre-process the entire data set, created our inverted index, and then we'll be using this inverted index to find or search for the words. Now, <clears throat> the uh, inspiration of this index is from actually the real world, because in the real world, this is what the index in a book looks like, where a term references the page number. So you have these terms like a bots, right, into phase commit, and you have on which page numbers there exist, they're, they're uh, occurring. So on a bots, the word a bots is occurring on page 222 and 224, and ab abstraction is occurring on all of these pages and so on. So this is like an index already created, so the, the inspiration for this is the real world. So we're doing this uh, visual planning exercise because if you had to just go through the code, it'll be very difficult uh, to understand anything. So what we'll do is we'll go through the, the complete planning exercise, visual planning exercise, and then we'll build up the entire project from scratch. Okay, so make sure you watch this to the end because you don't want to miss any detail. Uh, because if you were to copy this and use it in your project, you want to know how the code works because if you want to make changes to that in the future, you would at least know how to maintain it, right? So uh, <clears throat> 
the way you create the index, so now we're very clear that we want to create the index, but the way to do that is we have a three step process, uh, actually just two steps, the third is just search. So the, the process starts with tokenization. Tokenization is splitting the text on a word boundary and removing punctuation marks. So uh, this is something that we have also seen in many of the AI projects. So if you've, uh, if you've seen the AI projects in my, on my YouTube or, or probably if you've bought any of the courses, you know that tokenization, uh, you, you take the prompt from the user, you tokenize it and you get the response also from OpenAI in a tokenized manner and OpenAI also charges you based on those tokens, right? So that's a very common process when working with AI projects at least, but also with uh, search projects. So tokenization is when you take the search query, which the user wants to search, and split the text on a word boundary and remove all the punctuation marks. So example is that this is the sentence, a donut on a glass plate, only the donuts, and you want to tokenize it, so you run the tokenize function on it, and what you get is these split words. So a donut on, a, so you, you've put, uh, you've separated all these words, and now you have them in, an, sorry, in an array. The next is filtering. Filtering has three stages in, 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 it, in it. So the first stage is lowercase. So in order to make the search case insensitive, because if you're searching for cat, the word cat, right? C with a capital A T or a capital C A T or C A with a capital T all need to be normalized to cat with all small C A T. That's how you do uh, because that's how you'll be able to match uh, if the text or the word exists in the in the text or not. Then you'll be dropping your common words. So almost any English uh, text contains commonly used words like a, uh, i, the, or b. So such words are called stop words, and we're going to remove them since almost any document would match the stop words, right? Because a uh, and I and the and B, these words will be there in almost all the documents. So we don't want to keep and end up matching them. So we remove all those words. We drop the common words from our search um, query. And the third one is stemming. So um, we have words like fishing, fished, and fisher, and we can reduce all of these to the base form, which is fish. So for this, we are not going to be implementing our logic for stemming because this is just a part of the entire, uh, the, the bigger project. So for just for stemming, we are going to be using the Snowball Stemmer library. It's, very, it's a very commonly used library and uh, that's the one that we'll use to reduce the words to their stem, okay? And this is what our analyze function will now look like because we want to tokenize, which is the first stage, tokenize, and then we also want to uh, create lowercase filter, stop word filter, and stemmer filter, and find, finally we'll get our tokens. So we'll, pro we'll do all these uh, processes on the text. Right, so that's, that's what you want to do on your search query. Now, to create our inverted index, you start with a index, uh, a variable called index. Uh, your, sorry, your, your type called index, and you'll, ha you'll obviously have variables like which will be, uh, will be initializing that, but in this case, it's uh, index which is of uh, type, map, string, and integer. Okay, so index is going to look like this, as you know already, and it has the string and the integer. So coming back here, string and the integer, okay? So that's your, um, that's the map that we're creating for our index. And when we start off, you know by now that we, we will be pre-processing all of our text. So we will be adding things to our index. So this is what the code will look like. So what this function is going to do, the add function is going to do, is going to take texts like these, a donut on a glass plate, only a donuts, or donut is a donut, and going to give us this sort of a uh, map. So we have uh, donut on in one and two, both. So donut is there both in one and two. Glass is in one, is, the word is, is in second only, on is in one, only is in one, plate is in one, okay? So with this function, which basically adds our documents, in, our, in this case, we're just assuming that this is what the documents look like. And when you run this function, this is what you get in the output, okay? But in our case, that obviously the docs are 650,000. And so we'll take all our docs from our Wikimedia dump to our index, we'll add, and we'll create a huge, huge, huge map index for all the text that we have in our Wikimedia dump. Finally comes search. So in our case, in our project, we'll be searching for this 
text small wild cat these three words and we'll be using our search method to to search uh, and we'll be only searching our index what that means is that once we have created this index like this from the index function now we don't have to go through the docs for these words all we have to do is we have to search through the index that we have created so like for example imagine if this was small or wild or cat we'll just search through the index and we'll find where in which all documents is small wild cat appearing now the the thing is with our index with our search method what we get back is these three arrays which says that this the word small is in all of these documents the word wild is in all these documents and the word cat is on all these documents and this is something called as a disjointed set because there's nothing in common with these right these are all three different sets that we're getting that you know these words are in these uh, documents so what do you do you you do you perform something called as an intersection of these of these sets and that's how you get you create like an intersection method uh, function the intersection function is going to take those three sets that we had and is going to find the common one once which is 173 the code for this intersection and for search is like the basic run of the mill code that you get online for intersection right is just finding you the common element in all these three and this is why the search that we had earlier we just add one more thing to the search which is the intersection you see this line here intersection that's the only thing that we add to our search and this way is the final output that we'll get will be the document where this this text small wild cat will appear so i hope the approach right now makes sense to you this is what this is the approach that we'll be following to build our project so now let's get started so we're going to go ahead and create a directory for this project so i'll call it the full text search engine and i'll cd into it and here i'll say go mod in it github.com slash akhil sharma oops and slash full text search engine Okay, and this should give us the go.mod file. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the data set at the root here. So I'm going to say go.exe and at the, at the base here, I'm going to go ahead and put the data set and I'm just going to remove this part yeah so this is the name of my uh, gzip the the reason i removed that bracket one is because uh, when i save multiple of the same files in my uh, in the windows pc it just creates like that bracket one meaning that there's one more copy of the same thing just remove that uh, just saying that in case you didn't know <laughs> but i'm sure you know that already anyways so here uh, I'll minimize this I'll come back here and now I'll have my main.go file which is where everything originates and then I have my utils folder and in the main.go file I'm gonna say package main I don't know why this is happening package main and I'm gonna import a couple of things but not right now as, as I use them or import them now one thing that I definitely need is the utils folder right uh, and I'll import that as well but first things first what I, I want to define the path of the data dump so I'm going to call that dump path and the other thing I want to define is the um, search query the thing that I want to search for in that data dump so I'm going to call that query both of these are variables of type string I'm going to use the flag package so if I'm using the flag package and I'm pressing s uh, f control s 
it should have got me the flag package. I don't know why it didn't get. Anyways, so yeah, flag dot string variable setting. I'm going to set both the uh, flags for the dump path and for the query. The first one, as you know, is dump path. And the name of the file. So in our case, the name of the file is this. And the description for that is it's the wiki abstract dump path. Okay. And here, this is the query. I'm sure you got the spelling right. And the search query itself is small wildcat and the description for this is it's a search query and I'm going to go ahead and parse these flags and I'm going to print out that full text search is in progress Then I'll now the thing is I want to show to the user that hey this is how much time it took for me to uh, create the index this is how much time it took me to search for that text so I'm going to use the time package and get my timestamp for now and I'm going to use the utils package here the utils package which will help me um, do all the stuff that I just showed you on on screen which is uh, tokenizing and loading the document and creating those filters creating the index all of that stuff will be in the utils the first thing that I need is to load the document sorry utils dot load the documents and the documents is in the dump path as you know now and uh, I'm going to get the documents in return from here or the error and we can handle the error here so if error is not equal to nil we say log dot fatal error now before we even create the index right we have to load all the documents so in our dump we have like I said around 600,000 documents we want to load all of those and we want to use those to create the index so when I load all the documents, I want to show to the user that, hey, this is how much time it took me to load documents. So when I say log.printf loaded the number of documents. So it will add up all the number of documents and in how much time. So it's going to say length of the documents time dot since the start of the program. And start just to be clear is time right now. Then we create our index. So you know that we first get our documents, then we create the index as we as I've shown you in the uh, in the planning diagram. So for this also, I have utils dot index. Everything is in utils. And if you remember, once we make our index, we also use the add function to add all the documents to the index and that basically helps us create the index for the words. So I'm going to show to the user indexed these many documents in this much time comma length docs comma time dot since start. And now again, I'll rewrite the value of start time right now. So I first loaded documents and then I added them to the index. So whenever that process was done, after that again, I start, uh, I, I recalibrate the value of start. Again, I recalibrate the value of start because 
from then like from the last process was completed i want to calculate the time how much how many seconds it took and this is matched ids so in my index if you remember the reason we created the index okay so first we create the index then we add documents to the index so that we get the index for all the words uh, that exist in, the, in those documents so that that'll help us search now remember i had i had said that we don't uh, have to now search the documents we ac actually have to just search through the index so we're going to use our query and search through those index and get the ids uh, of all the documents that match in the sense that have that uh, term the sec uh, the search term so i'm going to say log dot printf search found number of documents and percentage v which is length of matched ids count time dot since start and we're going to range over all the matched ids and print out the value so we're going to say doc is equal to docs id means we're referring to them one by one and we're printing out the ID and the text of that doc okay so I'll quickly take you through it. Uh, it it's quite possible that it's difficult for you to imagine what's happening here because we haven't created all the other functions and all the other uh, files in the utils folder which are being used here but it's okay to uh, it's okay to work at that level of abstraction because we know what's going to happen here so this function for example the load documents function is just going to take in the path and going to load all the documents in our data dump that we have to search through to start with we created the dump path variable and the query variable the query variable is is what you want to search in the uh, dump the name of the, the name of the dump file is this and then you start you create a variable called start you you make it equal to time dot now which is the timestamp right now and you load all the documents and then you print out that how much time it took you to load the document and this was here start was basically from the starting of the program then you rewrite the value of start uh, with whatever the time is right now when this pro process has completed and then you create a index then you create uh, a basically a new instance of the index and then you add the docs that we have after loading the documents that you got back docs variable we're going to send it to add function because this will help us create the index for all the docs that we have once we have the index uh, we want to search our query in that index and we're also going to print out that hey th these many documents uh, in this much time were indexed we're printing all of this out th this detail out the timestamps out because we want to know which process is taking the most amount of time is searching taking more of more time or indexing is taking more time or loading is taking more time then you uh, will print out that hey so many documents were searched and uh, sorry so many documents were found with this match in this much time and you're going to just loop through those matched ids and you're going to access the documents for those matched ids and you're just going to print out the value of those documents all right now we want to work on these functions like the load documents function so that is in a file called document.go and then we have our index.go file as well here so i'll say index.go i'll also have filter and tokenizer so i'll say filter.go and tokenizer dot go 
I'm going to close all of the files except from the document file. Here, I'm going to say package utils and here I can actually define utils which I've been calling here up until now. I'm going to say github.com until Sharma 90 full text search engine. So I'm going to go and copy here and paste this slash utils. So this utils now, Golang understands what this utils is. So going back to document, I'm going to define what document looks like. It's a struct with a title. So I'd shown you in the beginning itself. So the document has title and URL, it has text and it has ID. Right, so in the beginning of the, the, the diagram that I showed you, the whimsical board, I'd shown you that each sample data in the data dump looks like this. It has a title, the URL, which is also a string text definitely string and id. Now the title in xml this one looks like this. So for golang for the purpose of golang the title is going to look like this with the, with the t capital but we also want to tell golang that hey in xml it's going to look like this with the t small that's what we want to look for. And The URL is going to look like this and the text is going to be in the abstract tabs as you've seen already before, abstract, uh, yeah. So our load documents function is what we'll create now. As we know it takes in the path. The, so yeah, so this will be the abstract tag, the URL tag and the title tag and here you get back document and error. So I'm going to use the OS package to open up the path. And with every single operation that we perform, we also check for error just to be sure. So we'll check for error here. And now we'll, we know that the file is a .gz file. So we have to use gzip, create new reader for the file. I'm going to get back gz and the error. I'm going to handle the error again. So we'll say if error is not equal to nil, return nil, comma, the error. And again, defer gz.close to the end of this program. To read XML, we need the XML package and the new decoder method. Now reading XML and JSON is very similar as you can see. Just like for JSON, we also specify the values that will be, the, be in JSON and we have in the JSON package the new decoder similar. XML works very similarly. So we create a dump struct which is documents And each document so document that we have defined is each document inside the big data dump but the data dump is actually a collection of 
multiple documents and each document refers to the document struct but as you see here it is a slice of document that's a collection of multiple documents and in XML is going to look like this doc. To begin with we have dump as empty and then we use the decode and get all the values into the dump. So this DEC has all documents. We uh, perform the decode method on it to get the dump values into the dump and then we handle the error. So from the docs basically is equal to dump dot documents. So we have access to all the documents and now we can range over those documents. And return docs comma nil. So that's our load documents method and here we should import all the packages that we've used up here. Uh, I've used the compressed gzip slash gzip. I've used encoding slash xml. I've used os. All right. Now we have to create our index. So the index that you're referring to here, utils.index, this as you see, using the make method creates a new instance of the index type index, uh, index type. So that's what we'll have to define here. So here I'll go ahead and say type index is a map string and int and this also is in package utils and then I have the add function here which takes in the docs so in my case add is a method for the index index type and takes in docs of type collection of documents and here we will range over the docs and we will call our analyze method so for doc dot text Now analyze is a function that we haven't created yet and the analyze function actually will be in the tokenizer. So here we'll have tokenize and also analyze. Analyze takes in any string and returns back slice of strings and this does everything for us. The analyze function does everything from tokenizing it or, or calling the tokenize function for the text then whatever you get back in the tokens you can also call the lowercase filter so you know the second stage is filtering so we'll call that for tokens and the stop word filter for the tokens and the tokens which is the stammer filter tokens and returns the tokens so the first function it's, the, it's being called is the tokenize so this takes in text 
pipe string. And here we'll say return strings dot fields func. Take some text r return and returns a boolean. Any code dot is letter R any code dot is so here we're doing a quick check if um, R right so for tokenize one by one we're taking in the um, the runes and checking if it's letter not letter not number so on and after we have it tokenized we call the lowercase filter which is so lowercase filter and the uh, the stop word filter and the stemmer filter stop word as you remember is for the common words that we are going to eliminate lowercase is to ensure that our match happens even though uh, so our match is not case sensitive and stemmer, as you remember, is for all the words to become uh, their stem, to be made equal to their stem. And in the filter, filter again belongs to package utils. And lower case filter, we have the stop word filter. And we have the stemmer filter. So the lowercase filter takes in tokens by a string and returns also a slice of strings. So here we will create R which is equal to a slice of strings with the length of tokens and we are going to uh, range over all the tokens and simply convert them into lower, uh, lower caps. So for lower caps we just use strings dot to lower method and convert everything into lower caps and we just return R. For stop word, we'll define some words like so firstly take some tokens And the common words that I've taken is a filter map of the common word like a uh, and b have i, which I want to remove. And again, just like I did here, I'll create a um, r, which is a slice of strings equal to the length of tokens. And I'm going to then range over all the tokens. And I simply have to remove those words now. So I'll just remove those words and return R from here. And the stemmer filter basically uses the snowball ENG package that I talked about earlier. It's an external package. This will help us to convert the words into their stem. So it takes in tokens, type string, returns string, slice of strings. The way it works is it you again start with R, 
a slice of string with of length tokens and you again uh, range over the tokens and you just use snowball.stem method and pass in the token and finally turn R. That's it. So that's how our filters work. Now back to our tokenizer. So we created uh, everything into, we tokenize the text and we only returned the text from tokenize, tokenization, right? We only return the text which is uh, like one by one, all the single numbers. So if the text, if you remember was, he is a good boy. This is going to return, so going to take in one text which is string and going to return a slice. So he like that is a good That's what returning runes one by one, that's how you get this, right, a slice. And you've sent that slice into lowercase filter, you sent that into stop word filter and the stemmer filter, which by now you know what, what they do. They uh, convert everything into lowercase, everything into, uh, remove all the stop words from the text and uh, convert all the words into their stems. So now our tokenizer is done, but for our tokenizer, we have to mention this will launch with package utils and we're going to import strings and unicode. So this is done. And coming back to our index circle. So just to make sure document is also done. Yeah. So coming back to our index, we have uh, in our index method. We're going to add the value to index. So, with the help of this method, we take in the documents and create an index for the document. Then we have the search function. The search function. The search function basically, as we have seen earlier. We have seen the search function earlier. It basically uh, is going to search against the index that we have. And the main part in the search is now the intersection because we'll get a disjointed set when we range over the text and uh, we 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 compare it against the index and we try to find the token in the index and we'll get a disjointed set and most importantly now we'll have to run the intersection to find the intersection of those disjointed sets the intersection method is a straightforward method so you uh, take in two values two disjointed sets and you get back one so all you do is a bunch of comparisons of the length and uh, you ensure you just find the intersection of the common values. So with search, the search is going to search for the value, the query string in the index that you had created earlier. And uh, it's going to return multiple such disjointed sets. So what you're going to do is you're going to loop since you're in the loop here, as you, as you can see. So it's going to send two by two. So when you get, when you send these two, you get something, you send these two, you get one set, and then you send these two sets again to get one single set. And all you're doing is you're finding the intersection between these values. Right, so that's how search and intersection works. And this, completes our program but I'll just quickly go through everything and just to see if we have imported all the right packages and what we now have to do is we have to just run go mod tidy and 
and now we can go ahead and run this program. So go run main.go. Now here we can see some errors. So in document.go line 31. Um, yeah, this is equal to sign is missing. And in index.go line 7, there's an issue. So I'm going to have to add range to this. And now let's try running it. Okay, so tokenizer.go line 10. Is letter and is number. Got dot. Got dot. Okay. So this starts off the full text search, and it will take us a while to load all the documents. That's not a problem. We we can wait. And you loaded all of these documents, 675,000 documents in 18 seconds. Now remember that every single time that you run your search in your project, you don't have to load docu documents every single time, right? Once you've loaded them, once you've created the index, that's it. After that, you just have to run the search. So this is why we have put out these timestamps just to know what is taking the most time. So loading took a lot of time. Now creating the index will also take some time. So let's wait for that also. <coughs> yeah, so it had completed. I just had to press enter. Sometimes it doesn't get back the result. When I press enter, I, I, I could see it indexed all those documents in 12 seconds. And search found only one document in 14.51 uh, milliseconds. And the and this is the, the document ID and this is the text of the document. The wildcat is a species complex comprising blah 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 blah. And this is in this document, this is the abstract. This is the title, sorry. And um, sorry, the abstract, I think this is the abstract. And this is where we found the one match. So after in intersection. Right. The tokenizer. Yeah. So after intersection, you just uh, come to only the doc last documents where it's you know when all the words are there. So for example, small wildcat. As you remember, small will be found in some documents. Wild will be found in other documents. Cat will be found in other documents. And all that will happen in search. In search, you're basically uh, running analyze and you're ranging over everything and you're uh, finding that value in IDX, which is your index for that particular token. You're uh, accessing each of the values one by one. And once you've done, once you had those matches, you will then call intersection method, uh, which, like I showed you, you know, so it takes in two at, at one time and returns back the intersection. And this, at the end, you'll basically have a document which will have all these three words matching. So once you've done your loading and indexing, all you have to do then is search, right? So as you can see here, it takes in, it takes very less time to search through the documents. The only thing that takes time is, is loading all the documents and indexing them. This you can do beforehand itself because searching doesn't take much time. This is a nice project that you can you just have to pick up these two uh, folders. Actually, you don't even have to. You might already have a utils folder in your existing project. So you just have to copy these files in your project and um, your main file. And then instead of this data, you might have like a MongoDB database. So you can just pull the data from there and then search uh, in that data. 
you can pull the data into Redis and search through it or pull it or, or maybe use an aggregation query to return something and then search through that data. So, uh, you know, like a text search through that data. So that's the use case for this project. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have some code now that you can use in your project. This is how you implement a full text search engine with Golang, a very simple yet effective uh, approach that scales and that takes very less time to search through something. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you uh, watch the rest of the videos in this series and also don't forget to check out the six AI Golang projects because AI is as you know is going to be very big in 2024 and mostly when you apply to a company your resume and pro your projects and portfolio is going to be looked at by somebody who's not technical and they would want to look at a lot of AI projects especially uh, now when AI is on, on such a boom okay so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video